Hello, welcome to WLA Weekly here at Queens Park Arena. I'm your host, Tally Campbell. On today's show, we take a look at the past week in the Western Cross Association. We've got your results, but first, we speak to Ethan Iannucci of the Langley Thunder at the Langley Event Center. And we're joined with Ethan Iannucci of the Langley Thunder, and uh, we just wanted to catch up with you and uh, see when you started playing lacrosse, or when did it all start for you? Uh, I started when I was about eight years old. Flyer went home in uh, grade three, and I don't know, I was just hell-bent on playing, and my parents uh, resisted for a couple uh, months and then finally gave in. When did it, you think it started to become serious for you? And... Um, I think it started to become serious maybe when I was about... You know, my middle to late teen years and I started to realize there was a uh, potential for going to school and uh, there was a pro league and all that. I didn't really, I wasn't really in the know for, uh, for the first part of my career. So uh, yeah, probably my late teens. Yeah, a really big turning point for me was when I went to go play in St. Catharines. Uh, Les Bartley was there. Uh, he's since passed, but uh, he's a long time uh, great coach. Uh, lots of people know who he is. And um, but yeah, he kind of let me know that there was that option was open to me and you might as well go to school and get an education out of it because if the pro league's not there when you come out, it probably wasn't worth it. And, you know, otherwise it should still be there and might as well get your education. So that's what I did. How about for any junior players coming up through the ranks? Is there any bit of advice that you would uh, give them? Um, yeah, I'm actually coaching a junior A team in Langley right now. And um, I don't know, just, just try hard. I don't know. Somewhere along the lines, it, it became uncool to be a try hard. But uh, I think it's cool, and I think those, that's what makes the difference between you know, good and great is just that extra bit of work ethic. You know that, and just keep the stick in your hand as much as you can, and uh, just get video of yourself and send it off to schools, and you never know. You, know, you, never, uh, you can't score if you don't shoot, right? So, How about your biggest uh, lacrosse moment? What do you think that would be? I'd probably say the last two seasons playing with the Langley Thunder. Uh, making it to the Man Cup has always been uh, you know, a long time dream of mine and um, I kind of feel like that's the pinnacle of lacrosse achievement for myself personally and uh, you know I just I just love this team and I just really want to get there one more time. What does the future look for you? Uh, do you think you'll be playing in five years or what do you think? Yeah I hope to be. I'd, uh, I'd ideally like to play until I'm 40 but you know you never know how that's going to go uh, so I just try to keep myself healthy and, and hope for the best but um, I don't know I see a life surrounding lacrosse for myself uh, either through coaching or clinics or, or stuff like that, travel team, all that. So, um, yeah, I don't think uh, I'm going to be departing from the lacrosse world anytime soon. Great, thanks, Bill. Now we're headed to the Queen's Park Arena where I spoke to Dan Marshall, the voice of the Nanaimo Timberman. I'm joined here with Dan Marsh, the voice of the Nanaimo Timberman. Uh, Dan, we're just over halfway through the season. What are your thoughts so far? It's been incredibly unpredictable, and what a fun WLA season this has been. A lot of people thought Victoria, the moves that they made, the Conways, the Rangers, uh, those types of players with uh, all of that history of offensive production, they'd be good, and they have been out in front uh, as we're heading into this week's action. And the Maple Ridge Berards in second place, who saw that coming? But Curtis Dixon's been on fire all season long, leading the league in scoring. Everyone knew that Dixon was a great player, but after missing most of last year, uh, who was he going to be in 2013? Well, he's been Mr. WLA. If you want to look at an early season MVP candidate, it's, it's got to be Dixon. And then you look at the rest of the pack. You know, Langley is, I think, playing well enough to be in the mix still for first place, but I am surprised that they're maybe not up a couple of more wins in Victoria territory. And then you've got the likes of the Bellies, the Adnax, the Timmerman, three teams with four wins and you would think that one of those teams is going to be the team that jumps up and grabs maybe the fourth spot although the way that the season's gone with you know seven eight games left for teams it's really hard to predict even on any given night who's going to win uh, you think Maple Ridge Victoria Victoria's probably going to find a way to win a game on a Sunday night even on the road they don't do it uh, the bellies you say well they could never drop two in a row to the temperament that happens so it's been a very strange time and this week is I think the final gear up only two games in the WLA and after July 1st everyone's got their roster solidified now you're going to see the push and I think what you'll see is the teams that are for real after July 1 will be the teams that make that strong push and will be more consistent than what we've seen throughout the league so why do you think we're seeing all this different Timmerman beating Sam Bellies and all this variety of things that we're, weren't predicting. I think what we're seeing is an influx of youth with these teams. I think more and more teams are building through the draft. You're not seeing the big fly-ins from Eastern Canada that you saw back in the 90s and the early 2000s. Money's tight and it's just not possible anymore. So you're seeing an influx of young talent in the league 
And I think uh, what you're seeing now is the unpredictability of youth. I, I think you can just describe it that way. How do you know what young, inexperienced players are going to do on a night-to-night -night basis? How are they going to integrate their lives with the WLA? Everybody's working. It's not like you've got focus on lacrosse on your mind the entire season long. So it's a transition for young junior A players coming into this league and really let's say running the league right now. It's not really the veterans that I'm seeing on a nightly basis that are running the league, although you look at the top scorers, you see Corey Small, you see Corey Conway, you see Scott Ranger, of course, but the young players, they're fun to watch. It's exciting to see the transition, but it's also unpredictable. And lastly, now Tim made a lot of change in the offseason, uh, a new coach, and new young players, getting rid of some, a few players, Ranger and Conway. Uh, what do the few, next few years Tim look like? It's exciting. Uh, this is the poster team for youth. Scott Ranger, the face of the franchise for eight seasons, no longer with them. Corey Conway established himself as a great force last year, no longer there. So who do you turn to? Well, it's a bunch of young guys again. And, and on a nightly basis in the Nine, well, Cody Bremner maybe is the guy. Maybe it's Paul Breber. Maybe it's Cale Ratcliffe. Maybe it's Blake Kenny up front. Zach Boychuk has been the consistent in net. Matt King retiring. Was Boychuk going to be the man? I think he's been very good. There's been a couple of strange games there, but I think he's been very good. I think they found a number one goaltender. Uh, the back end also in some flux right now. But you never know on a given day who's going to step up and, and be the guy. I think the Dexter and M's trade, those are the guys that came back for Scott Ranger. Those guys are going to start to fill into their roles as the season goes along, indeed as the years go along. And Caleb Toth is only going to get better. But I would not have predicted that Nanaimo would be right in the mix at this stage of the season. All the changes they've made, you have to give Caleb Toth a lot of credit. And maybe he's going to be one of the bright young coaching minds that uh, comes up next. A uh, 4-7 and seven record heading into this week's action, I think, considering the roster that's in the Nanaimo. I think they'll take that and be pretty excited about it. Great. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, Dan, for joining us. We now pick up the action in the first game of the week where we saw the new Westminster Assemblies taking on the Langley Thunder. Brad Chandler has the call. The U.S. Penalty, number 47, Kevin Lane. Two minutes for checking for the high. Time to penalty, 11. The U.S. Penalty, number 47, Kevin Lane. Two minutes for checking for the high. So away in the game tonight, two goals and one assist. Logan Schuss has a pair of goals as well. Ethan Iannucci's one and one, and so is Kyle Belton. And now Alex Turner, I think, is one and one. Is he just snuck a trickler in? Yeah, that definitely was a trickler. I'd like to see the replay of that to see if the ball crossed the line before it turns went through the middle or went through the crease there. Sorry. Make that under offense. Goal. Looks a bit fired up here to start the third. They've had the ball in their offensive zone for basically the whole time. Two and a half gone. As McMichael has a rip and tucks it short side. He said he's got back behind the back pass, right into the stick of Johnson. He looks at Jarrett Toll out of the gate. Jarrett Toll on the breakaway. Buries. There's the transition goal they're looking for. Oh, big hit, Guy John Van Beek. Those, those are two solid kids getting together. And Jackson in transition, Barry there, there short side low. He it comes is. alive and ties the game. All throws tonight at Queen's Park Arena. The Nanaimo Timmer were in town to shock many as they beat the Sam Bellies 14 to 11. The efforts of Kale Radcliffe with four goals and two assists was huge, along with Miles Kenny and Cody Bremner both added three goals each. That was only the second time in history the Nanaimo Timmer had beaten the Sam Bellies. Friday night it was a doubleheader. First, the Lakers were taking on the Thunder, which to surprise was a very low scoring game, only a total of 12 goals. Eight by Lakers and only four by the Thunder. Burnaby's Jason Jones had three goals, while Dan Lewis kicked away 33 shots. And then next, we're at Bear Mountain Arena to test the number one team in the Washington Lacrosse Association, and wasn't much of a test as the Rocks pull away with a 13 6 victory. Rocks goaltender Matt Vink stopped 33 shots, while Corey Conway and Jeff Shatler netted two goals, while adding four assists each. Both the Adonacs and Lakers are back in action on Saturday night, this time facing each other. Both teams look tired, but the Adonacs pull away with the 11-7 victory. Brett Hickey was the first star with two goals and four assists. And at the end of the week, it was a doubleheader. First, we're going to kick off the action at Frank Crane Arena. The Timmen were trying to prove the skeptics that it wasn't luck, it was skill. The reason they beat the Sand Valleys and within the last four minutes of third period, the Timmen burst out with four goals to take the win 11 8 over the new Westminster Sand Belly. Only the third time in history, second time this week, beating the Sand Bellies. 
And at Planet Ice, the Shamrocks took a visit, and what a game it was. Back and forth through 60 minutes, however, Maple Ridge's Curtis Dixon would score with only one second to go in the third period to take the game 10-9. Dixon added three more goals than the Knights and four assists with Victoria's. Scott Jones added two goals and two assists. And with that, it wraps with the standing as follows. The Shamrocks lead the way with 14 points, followed by the Maple Ridge Berards with 12, Langley in third with 11 points, the Berards are locked up with 10, Bellies with 9, and the Adonax Timberman tied with 8 points, with the A's with one game in hand. Next week, there are only two games in the West Lacrosse Association. First on Wednesday, the Adonax are in town to take on the Thunder, and Shamrocks pay a visit to Frank Crane Arena on June 29th to take on the Nanaimo Timberman. <laughs> Before we go, a big congratulations to Nanaimo Timberman's Cody Bremner on being this week's Hillside Player of the Week. Cody got seven points in two victories this week. Thank you for watching this edition of WLA Weekly. I'm your host, Tally Campbell. Have yourself a fantastic night.